Hello everyone, this is Mahmoud Ghadir, and this presentation will be talking about improving quality factors of superconducting cobalt and wave resonators for quantum computing processors. I would like to just thank our collaborators at the Quantum Electronics Laboratory at University of Berkeley and our founders, including the Dean Free at KPPM. We will look at superconducting quantum computing, modeling of circuit quantum loop dynamic, and one approach to improve the performance of quantum processors, and we will see at experience and team results. A new paradigm of information processing in recent years has triggered anticipation to studying physical systems that can be used as building blocks of future quantum processors. This process includes engineering of the Hamiltonian of the quantum systems, allowing that system to explore the quantum world, and then measuring the interesting part of the system, including the zero and one computational basis that allow to perform quantum computing. In quantum computing, we have a qubit, similar to the classical bits built by transistor, but this qubit, because it is a quantum system, so it has uh, many interesting features, such as superposition and entanglement, which are provided by quantum physics. This superposition and entanglement allows this qubit to be more than zero and one, can be in any state between actually zero and one, which gives the quantum computing its power. Actually, any two level quantum system uh, can be explained by quantum mechanics, can be a qubit. We can build a qubit also using superconducting circuits, in which a nonlinear Rezi circuit, trumped by an element called Josephson junction, make the circuit a quantum system. This circuit has an energy spectrum in which the lowest two energy states of that system can be a new computational basis, which are the which are used for quantum computing. So we can build a qubit, or actually more than one qubit entangled together, and then we can perform readout process of that system using one element called superconducting coplanar microwave resonators, which is a among the best to read and change the set of qubits because of this excellent coupling between them. This coupling actually is the best of forming circuit quantum nuclear dynamics architecture, which is a solid state and argued to the KVT QED approach to studying interaction between natural atoms and photons. This is a CBW resonator coupled to a qubit, and this coupling allows to flip and change the state of the system or reading the state of the system. So it can be used as readout process or writing to the system. The system can be described by the James Cummings Hamiltonian, which has three interaction terms, the qubit term, the cavity resonator term, and the coupling, which is a capacitive coupling between the resonator and cavity. However, qubit and CBW resonators and in general superconducting uh, quantum devices cannot be cannot be tested or used for many possible applications because of defects, defects and contaminations in the device. These defects, known to be two-level uh, systems or TLS oxides defects that grow naturally in the system. And one major for that is the quality factor, which has three parameters. The internal quality factor, which is the internal dissipation, measure of the how much dissipation in the device, and external quality factor, a measure of how much uh, the system is actually coupled to external wall, to how much Q it actually is coupled to the resonator, and total Q, which is the total contribution of both. In our study, the external, external quality factor is fixed between resonator and, and qubit, but the internal, the internal quality factor, which is the, how much internal distribution we have, we cannot control it. And it's not of our control because it is controlled by how much defect in the system. So we can use it as a measure of our process that we, we use to improve the quality factor. Here is an 8 qubit chip built uh, for 8 transmon qubits and 8 CBW readout resonators and other elements. With these 8 qubits, each of them has its reading uh, elements, its, its resonator, and in our study we focus only on the resonators because we want to prove their quality factor, which this improvement can be extended to the other elements in the chip. So, we can start by modeling of this chip, or actually we can start by modeling of the CBW resonators alone, because their improvement can be extended to the improvement of the chip. If we know how to remove defects in this resonators, we know actually how to generalize that to the qubits. So here we see in figure A, a resonator put in finite element simulation to simulate their performance for many cases. Figure B shows the simulation to the actual, actually sample box, and the chip. Figure C show, so shows an excitation of a single resonator in the device, and figure D shows the geometric parameters of the device. We have the geometric parameters described in this table, where we have, for example, CBW gap width, central line width, 
may be thickness and we have substrate thickness and we have three important geometric parameters which is which are the interfaces shown in this uh, different color we have the pink air circular interface neobium circular interface in the green one and the red one which is the neobium air interface these three interfaces are major causes limiting the q factors because these are the regions where oxides and contamination can grow we can start by this model relating the uh, internal quality factor to the dissipation factor and participation ratio. Dissipation factor is a measure of the oxides or measure of the loose tangent, direct loose tangent in the system. So we start by the uh, simulating the internal quality factor versus resonance frequency of the eight resonators in the device. We can have many cases uh, for many directly loose tangents from the simulation compared to the black care, which is from the measurement. This gives us an estimate of how much glue is actually in the device, and you can conclude that this is almost into the power minus three. We can have a nice study also from the simulation that uh, let us know which region of these regions actually much more dominant, and which region affects the quality factor much, and or which region uh, TLS oxides can grow more than others. So. We can see from here, after we put oxides on water everywhere, and we remove oxides at each region, once at a time, we can see this region, the air silicon interface, is the region in which if we can remove oxides in that region, we will have a significant improvement in the quality factor. This prediction is uh, coming from the simulation. So how, how we can do that using uh, experimental approach? And the answer using type of coating or cleaning the surface and we use self-assembled monolayers or we call, we call it SAM molecules. These SAM molecules actually are organic molecules that can grow in the specific middle surface through spontaneous uh, process of absorption. These molecules consist of three elements, the head group, organic group, and functional group. But this process of growing self-assembled molecules, organic molecules, is actually very convenient in the all of the microfab processes, in which even with width edge of a metal, where we grow sand on top of that, these molecules can be still in there in the place and can be fixed without any effect on the other uh, parts of the process. So they are very convenient in the process and we will use them. We use OTS for SAM process on circular interface, and we use uh, MHA ox, uh, acid solution for myopium. Uh, surface process. You can see here four samples, eight resonators in each sample, where we uh, perform a complete study of how uh, SAM can improve the quality factor of the device. So we have sample A shown in the black curve, which represents the standard process. Sample B represented in the green curve shows uh, the standard process with image A SAM at niobium silicon interface. Sample C, we can see in the blue curve, which has SAM at uh, silicon air interface, OTS SAM, and sample D, which has standard process with HF cleaning alone, with, with, without covering that surface with SAM. We can see an improvement in the quality factor versus photo, uh, uh, photon number, average photon number, in case where we put SAM in the silicon air interface, which is and this graph represents the second resonator, and this graph represents the seventh resonator. So the improvement actually in all of the resonators, but if we clean only the surface without putting sand there, we will not have a general improvement over all the chip. C and D shows the single photon excitation power signals, which is at this point. Here is the XPS and TM results, and from XPS we can see uh, two figures comparing the standard process and the process where you put surface and model areas. Here we can see oxides can grow in the neighboring surface in the standard process and can grow in the silicon oxide. But after we put SAM in that interface, we can see significant reduction in the oxides in the niobium and in the silicon. This study can be summarized in this figure where we have all of the resonators versus uh, all of the quality factors of the resonators versus the so the frequency, there is a frequency of each one of them for the four samples. We can see the red one shows the SAM uh, and standard process sample compared to the standard process sample alone. We can see the quality factor has improved and actually 
as approaching the simulation of the ideal performance of the device. So this improvement is an overall improvement of the device and give us a reproducible approach in the, the process. This work can be extended into the fabrication and design of superconducting quantum devices and quantum chips, which could help in the build of future control, fully controllable quantum computers. Thank you very much for listening.